Okay, cool. Uh, 1025 devices game. Uh, Alex and Bob takes. Uh, Alex and Bob take turns playing a game with Alex starting first. Initially, there is a number N on the chalkboard on each player's turn. That player makes a move consist of choosing any X with zero, uh, uh, X where X is between zero and N, uh, exclusive, uh, and N uh, uh, mod X is equal to zero, so choosing some x in which x is a device of n, uh, replacing the number n on the chalkboard with n minus x. If, if a player cannot make a move, they lose the game. Return true if and, only, if and only if Alice wins the game, assuming both players play optimally. Okay. Huh. And n could be up to a thousand, or well, less than a thousand. Um, huh, and this is easy, huh? Um, so this is a, I mean, there's a game theory component to this problem, which I suspect makes the game way uh, uh, straightforward. Um, and th th maybe maybe that that's why there's so many downloads. Uh, is that there may be like a quick ch thing where like the number, uh, uh, like th there's probably like a one line answer somewhere. Uh, without that. Um, you might have to do some game theory uh, uh, um, stuff, which I would say is probably like our scope of most interviews, but um, it's doable. But uh, okay, you, so you could always choose one. That's the thing. Um, okay, let me. I guess I'll, I'll try to break it down a little bit uh, for my own sake, really. Um, so let's say we have. Okay, so you can always choose one and n. Uh, 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 well, actually, just one, because you can't choose n. Otherwise, you just end the game every turn. But um, uh, so you can always choose one, whether it is a prime or not. Um, and if it's a prime, then you can only choose one. Um, if it's not a prime, let's say you have, you know, a six, then you could choose one, two, three. Okay. Do we want to be on a prime? Hmm. Okay, I guess we could work backwards actually. So uh, kind of like a a thing. So okay, so one Alice wins. Uh, two. Oh, sorry, two Alice wins. Wins. Uh, wait. Uh, who wins one? Alice goes first. Alex. Alice. I'm misreading the phrasing on each place there. Is this true? Hmm. Of course, Bob could choose one for one, right? Oh, oh no, because it has to be less than n. Okay, okay, I see now. So, I don't actually know what happens. So, I guess, well, Alice cannot make a move, so Bob wins. Uh, and let's say three, and as we know from example two, uh, Bob also wins because it's prime, so it just goes to two. Uh, uh, and four, you could, uh, uh, so Alice goes first, Alice can choose between two and three. Uh, so Alice would definitely choose three, so Alice wins four, so five is a prime, so you can only go to Four is so a Bob wins, uh, six. Um, yeah, so I, mean, I guess I see a pattern, but this is a little trickier than I would imagine for uh, 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 an easy, but I'm gonna do it anyway, so it's fine. Uh, and and only goes up to a thousand, so uh, but but the trick here, and this is as I said, mentioned earlier, this is a, a, a really game theory, -y, uh, or like I mean, it's not hard, it's not a hard game theory problem per se, but you need to have some. Uh, game playing background to uh, all this you know, knowledge, which isn't generally taught at a uh, algorithms class. So uh, yeah, uh, can Alice win? Uh, okay, so uh, this is way too long of in a way, even though it is descriptive. Uh, so 
So as we know, one can I win? So that's gonna win, right? Okay, now we go from I Okay. Um, okay. So here we get the factors of. Uh, yeah. Okay. I I I would do some f fancier stuff with factoring, but actually we don't need to because uh, uh, n only goes up to a thousand, so this will only run, you know, a certain amount of time anyway. Um, okay. So we, we should test it from j to j. Uh, if, um, mm, 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 maybe I'm saying this a little weird, but Basically, Alice always goes first, so Alice could win at this interval if if we go to a place where Alice can win. Someone like that, but maybe it have to mm. uh, I someone like that. No, I don't think that's quite right, but all right, okay. Mm. Well, I think two is hard coded, so uh. It's actually slightly hard to read. <laughs> okay, this. Actually, know how to adjust the size of these rings. Okay. Two, three, four, five. Man, if something just like even numbers that add in even numbers, that would be a little sad, but. <laughs> but that's what the pattern is telling us, though, I guess. During a contest, we would not have known that, which is what would this formula weird? Okay. Um, hmm. okay, actually, I guess maybe there is a simpler way, even though it doesn't make the problem simpler, is that, okay, well, if you have an odd number, well, all, all the factors are going to be prime, right? So that means it, it's going to get to an even number. Uh, if you have an even number, then I guess you could go, well, you could always take one and it gets odd number. 
But then you could always stay in even number. Does that actually help anyone? Even or odd? I don't know how that helps actually. Hmm. Um, yeah, six. So can Alice win for six? Uh, well, Bob has to go to. Yeah, my coach should work for more than just. <laughs> and clearly not, but. She went for two, three, four. So Alice she went for four for sure. So four. Uh, four checks is two. And then three. So can win is true. Yeah, probably structured as well. This code is also just like weird in general because you have to take account both uh, sides. Um, okay. Yeah. Because for five, you want to take. Uh, for five, you're going to get to four. Four Alice wins, so. How do I write this in a good way? Alice could win if well I guess it's more can first player win not can Alice win per se uh, so maybe the naming is a little weird but um, six six can six get to a state so six you could do one with five so Alice wins, so okay, so I mean six win automatically. And then for seven, uh, Alice goes first. Alice, well, it's a prime number, so Bob wins again because it can only go to six. Eight, eight, uh, well, Alice goes, but. And Alice can get to seven, so then Alice wins again. I mean, hmm. This is not right. Oh, yeah. Well, everything's true, it's not technically true. But, um, and the first player, so we could get to this state, and the first player. So we just need to get a place where the first player can Oh man. Man, I'm struggling a little bit with this. Usually I write this recursively. Maybe I should go back to that. <laughs> but um basically okay, so I is a winning state. If we could get to a state that uh, we could get to a state that uh, the opponent cannot win. Uh, the opponent wins next time. Okay, so but that uh, so if this is what that means in code means if this is so this is one if. One is zero. Okay. 
if this is zero, then this should be one. Yeah, I'm really struggling. Hmm. Three, so four. Three. Oh man, because this is not N, this is, should be I. Oh, sadness. Huh? Uh. Okay, well, mistakes were made. Okay. Uh, oh my god, I can't believe I spent so much time on a typo. Um, okay, I mean, at least I feel a little bit better about myself. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know how to kind of explain this uh, in a very short time. It is, I don't think this is a easy problem per se, though. Well, I mean, though, maybe it's something that you can prove mathematically about, like odd and even numbers, which is something I, it's probably true, like if, it's, if you just return n to it, uh, mod 2 or something like that, right? But um, I did it the uh, game theory way, which is not something that I would uh, uh, or can, able to explain in a quick way. It's just that uh, if, we, if given a certain state, if you could get to other states that uh, if you, you're winning, you are starting in a winning state if you could get to other states in which um, your opponent cannot win, right? So, uh, I mean, which it's a very wordy way of saying it. Uh, I think I'll... Uh, uh, I'll well, link some literature later on, but uh, around that stuff. Um, but yeah, but otherwise, I mean, it. Uh, I guess even this case, in this case, is a easy problem. It's just that, and I'll look at the logs later to see how long I spent on using uh, uh, n instead of i, which is unfortunate. Um, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and I, I suspect there's some some like way to prove that uh, all our numbers are winning states or something like that or the other way around but eh, I'm not going to spend time on that now uh, cool uh, I think as an oh as an individual question um, as a result I no no I mean uh, I mean it is a I, I, this is a bad individual question if you ask me uh, unless there, there's a insight that is like really obvious and I'm just you know not don't know how to think in an obvious way uh, uh, but in either case, it either seems like that if that's the case, that either that that uh, insight or is a little bit gotcha -y, like either you know it or you don't, or you feel it very quickly or you don't. And also in that case, there's no code, so like the coding is not great, or or not that the coding is not great, but like you don't learn anything from that from seeing someone doing that code. Uh, or uh, alternatively, uh, if this requires game theory, is something that I would say is beyond the scope of most interviews. Uh, like you should not, you know, test them on it. What are you testing really? And the code, even in that case, is not super complicated. So, uh, um, so like you're not really finding anything about a candidate. Um, uh, uh, I mean, maybe you could talk and kind of see how the thinking goes about, but that's a tough sell, I think. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, overall, I would not put this, or like I would not ask this on an interview in general.